So I'm working on a project and you know, I make the decision that, yep, yeah, YouTube is where I want to put it because that's where I'll be able to get the most, you know, people to view it, or maybe I have friends and family or even a client who's using YouTube. Yeah. How can I go about creating a file or uploading a file for YouTube? Well, there's lots of ways of doing it. I'm going to give you a very simple workflow. Okay. First off, you got to create a YouTube account. They're okay. free. Yep. The big thing to realize is that you have a 10 minute runtime limit. Okay. Another thing so my next feature might not make it up there. Well, you can request a special account, okay. but you have to be special uh, to get a special account. And I know, you're not special. I, I know what you're I'm saying. Not you're, not, you're not hurting my feelings. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, like if you were Hollywood, you could probably get one. Or if you have thousands upon thousands of YouTube views, they kind of hand them out. But it's sort of like the insiders club or going to a nightclub. Like, well, you don't have to wait in line, Mr. Carmen. Get, Come right in. Get right into the VIP section. I got you. Yeah, and that never happens to me. No, never, so, never. Sad life. Sad yeah. Life. So we, we got YouTube open, we've set up our free account. Yep. You need to upload the clip. Now, okay. it's a 10 minute limit and it also has a file size limit and you really don't want to sit there uploading that full resolution clip because it takes forever. Well also, I mean, very quickly if I'm using, let's say, an editing codec like Apple ProRes or Cineform or something like that, I could get you know, a huge file in just a matter of seconds even. Yeah, and, and so you want to upload it and the one that I say that's really easy is to use the Apple TV compression. Okay. Now you can make this out of all sorts of tools. You'll find presets in Adobe Media Encoder, in QuickTime Pro. You'll find it even right in iTunes. You can just drag a video file into iTunes and say convert for Apple TV. Right. So it's really easy to do. Right, and, and if you don't want to necessarily use Apple TV, if you're using it on a PC or using a different set of tools, even though some of those tools will work on a PC, uh, YouTube in particular loves flash video files, so if you can create an FLV file or any sort of MPEG-4 file, like an H.264 file will work as well. Yeah, you can do FLV. These days they're recommending going with MPEG-4, specifically H.264 encoding. So if you have a PC, it's fine. If you install iTunes, you yep. could do this transcode right there. That's it's true. And that's free software. That's great. So you yeah, transcode, I recommend to the Apple TV setting. It's a preset right in iTunes or QuickTime. It's very easy to do. You'll find the same presets in lots of other apps. Even Premiere Elements has it. And you can go ahead and just click the Upload button, and then YouTube comes up with a little thing saying, OK, well, what do you want to do? And it says, we're going to upload a video file. So we've already actually gone ahead and encoded a file uh, that's appropriate for YouTube. Yeah, and we cover how to do that on the disk and in the okay. book from Still the Motion already. Okay. So I'll just click the Upload button and navigate to it. In this case, it's an M4V file. And I'll click Select, and it adds it in, and it says, what do you want to call this? Now, you need to give it a little bit more of an information. You know, I don't want to do this whole file name here. So I'll say go together, which is the name of the song, and Luke Brindley, the musician that we worked with in the book. Mm -hmm. And I'll give it a description. I could say uh, concert footage of Luke Brindley. And that just helps people when they're doing a search to find it. And we'll say from the new book. There we go. Check my spellings. I'm notorious for missing a key. There we go. <laughs> and you could tag it with stuff. So okay. we could say Luke Brindley. So tags are like keywords. So like just like a photographer might tag a photo with a keyword, this is a keyword for the video. Exactly. And you can put commas between them if you need to. Mm -hmm. And it starts to put tags in. So that's fine. You need to pick a category. Categories are pretty broad on YouTube, but we'll okay. go with music here because it's a concert clip. Sure. Find the one that most closely matches. And then the big thing is, is what do you want to do? Private means you can invite 25 people and it won't show up in the search results. Okay. But only 25 people. Okay. Or public. So you really only have two options. So private might be a good choice though if you're trying to, I don't know, share a project with a client or, you know, a company that you're working for. Yeah, if you want them to see a rough cut and or you don't have the permission to get it out there in the net, this truly is private. It won't right. show up in search results, people can't find it. But if you want to be the next greatest YouTube star, you can share it with the world. Yes. Okay. So once we're all set there, you see here that it's actually, you know, sort of loading this up here. It's already uploading. We're all set. And I just say save changes. Now you have the ability here to actually auto share and you can connect your Facebook and your Twitter accounts. Oh, cool. And so once you publish a video, as soon as it's live, it'll tell the world about it, which is pretty cool. That's great. And you don't click upload video because it's already uploading. That's what this progress indicates. You just say save changes. Okay. Now it's pending. And pending means basically your video has to upload first. Right. Now, once it's uploading, you think it's instantly available. It's not. Okay. It's got to sometimes go through and further transcode or compress on the YouTube end, and it's got to sort of move its way through the pipeline, ping the servers, ping the database, blah, 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 webity web. So another, way of, another way of saying that, it might take a little while before you can find it on the YouTube site. 
Yeah. Okay. And, and what'll happen with that is if it's you know if you're doing this at four in the morning, it might show up at four ten. If you do it at two in the afternoon, it might be two thirty. Depending on how much traffic is going on the site, I get it. Yeah, it takes a little bit, but you see it's going through here. And what's nice is is it will actually let you know when it's done. And you know if we upload in high def, it works pretty well. Notice that it says you can upload up to 10 minutes. It has to be two gigabytes in size. So that's another reason to compress the file further. Right, that's down. why our original you know, file that we created, like a master file that we created in our edit application probably wouldn't work. Yeah, and so you know, uploading a 115 megabyte file is much faster than a two gigabyte file. Absolutely. And there is a cool thing here, best formats for YouTube. So if we click that, you'll see it actually gives you some advice and it'll tell you which file formats are going to work well for you. Yep. And it says, you know, basically, H.264. But if you want to do HD, it supports both sizes. Yep. You can load it up. You can use flash video. That's fine. Yep. Uh, but any of those are OK. And uh, I just say stick with the MPEG-4. Yep. Seems to do the job. And there's also a really cool thing here called the YouTube Handbook that mm. most people don't know about. And it gives you some very practical instructions. It's basically a help menu to YouTube. Ah, OK. And so it'll give you more information about tagging and posting. Sort and of how promoting. to optimize the video to get, it be, to get it to be seen out there, right? Yeah, including how to apply copyright info to a file or anything else. So you should definitely, as a content creator, you should browse this because you're going to want to tag it with copyrights and, and really make sure you sort of get your work so it's safe and registered to you. Got it. Now, it looks like that's done. And uh, it says everything's been saved. Success, it's up there. Yeah. And uh, you know, we could say embed and sharing options. You know, we could take a look at this, and there's my clip. So there's the direct URL. So I could I could copy that, put it into an email, and send it to somebody or something like that. Yep. And the embed options if you want to put it on your blog. Yep. And uh, looks like we're pretty good there. So let's just make a new tab and see if that video is live yet. It may or may not be. But look, here's the link. There's the mm. definite page. But it says this video is not yet processed. So that's sort of that little bit of lag you were talking about. Yeah. As it gets entered in the database, maybe does some further transcoding before it's uh, live on the site. But notice by using the keywords, yep. look, some of Luke's other videos that he's done, you know, Wolf Trap and on his own, yeah, yeah. they're showing up. Cool. So it's able to sort of see and be found and works very well. That's very neat. So YouTube is a ubiquitous video sharing site, and it's pretty easy to get your own footage and own projects up on YouTube. Yeah, it's the 500 pound gorilla. They definitely have the lead. It's very easy to do. Uh, there are other sites out there, but there's nothing wrong with posting to YouTube. You'll get a lot of views from it. Can't guarantee a, a smash success, but you definitely can be found by folks. Got it.